Hey guys, welcome back to another tutorial. It's cake challenge time again, which means my brigadiers have been voting for a theme to base their pieces on. The winner was comic book. And this is the mood board I put together as inspiration to work from. Stick around till the end of the video to see everybody's pieces and vote for your favorite in the comments below. I decided to go for a comic book look with this slice of cake. So let's jump straight into the tutorial. I started cutting this cake off camera and realized I probably should have shown you this bit. So I only baked one tier of an eight inch round cake and I sliced it half down the middle and I also torted it through the center. I then stacked half of the cake on top of the other half and sliced out a wedge shape. It's not quite half, I wanted it to be more of a wedge. I'm then placing this wedge on top and cutting the same size. So this little wedge on the right is spare cake and I'm also going to take a couple of layers off my tall one just to make the slice more in proportion. This is a cake purely made for the tutorial so I'm only using little bits of ganache as filling to stick it together. If you're making yours as a real order or cake you want to fill it with something a bit yummier such as jam and buttercream. I'm just sparingly using my ganache here as I'm using some leftovers I found in the freezer. I'm then just coating the whole thing in a layer of ganache, which once set will make the whole thing more stable and less wobbly. I do love ganache for that. This is the second layer going on and I'm just scraping it clean as best as I can with a scraper, trying to get the sides as straight as I can. And that's it, I've run out of ganache. This is as good as it's gonna get. So I'm just misting it with water and laying over some white sugar paste on the two straight sides. These are going to be the open sides of the cake. I'm just smoothing it down, cutting off the excess and then spraying it with yellow airbrush colour. I'm then going in with a slightly orangey brown colour just to add a bit of shading across the tops, bottoms and sides. I'm then taking a Dresden tool and marking in where I want my layers of filling to be. One in the centre, which I'm widening with the larger end of my tool, and another two on the top and bottom. I've got some hot pink paste, and if you can't roll a consistent sausage, this is the job for you. I'm just rolling with my little fingers to create a wobbly, bumpy sausage. This will make it look like a layer of jam spilling from the sponge. Just dampen across one of your stripes and start sticking in that bumpy sausage, pressing those thinner bits deep down into the crevice and leaving the bumpy bit sticking out. You want to do the same on the top and possibly use a different colour filling for the middle. I'm then just dampening the rest of the cake and laying over a paler pink sugar paste, just smoothing it on lightly and cutting out a wiggle shape from the top of the sponge cake sides. and then just tapping each of those wiggles with my fingers to neaten them up and clean the edges. I'm then gonna cover the board using the toilet seat method. Yes, it even works for a triangle. If you want to see the full in-depth tutorial of this method, it's always linked in the description box. But as you can see, you just want to stretch and push it up against the bottom of your cake wedge and it will go with a little bit of manipulation. It just leaves a clean finish around the bottom of your cake. I'm then taking that hot pink again and rolling a ball and I'm running my finger across the top to create the dip of a cherry and shaping out the bottom. 
Place this to one side whilst we roll a clean sausage of white paste and curl it on top for the white whipped cream. Now you can finish it off with the cherry. I've then always got some of these black stamens which I always find handy for cherry stalks and antennas. The next important bit is to stick a dot or mark on your board where you want the front of your cake to be. This is important because when we come to outline the cake in black, you will want to make sure you're looking at it from the exact same angle every single time. For this effect to work, you must be able to see a black outline from one angle. So choose your angle and make sure it's always pointing towards you. We're then going to roll our black sausages. Feel free to use an extruder if you have one. I had one in my drawer for years and never ever used it. I just found it much quicker to roll it myself. If you have trouble rolling a smooth consistent sausage, you just want to grab a smoother and gently roll it across and you'll see a more uniform shape start to form. I'm just going to continue rolling mine a little bit thinner into more of a string. Now you want to line every single bit of your cake. I'm only going to be decorating the front because this is just for the tutorial and it was a Saturday, it was sunny outside and I didn't want to spend all the time decorating the back. But you want to line every edge where a colour changes, so around the bumps of the fillings, the bumps of the icing where the sponge turns into the sugar paste top, and where the cake hits the board. And now I'm lining where I can see is the edge of the cake. So I'm stood off camera slightly towards the left, so although you can see the pink on the cake, to my eye where I'm stood for my dot on the board, the black line I'm adding is where I can see the edge. This is the key to creating this effect. I'm adding the black line all around the top of the cake and again down the centre of the slice where I can see the cake end. To give the impression of a full line without actually making one, you can just taper a string to point at either end and I'm placing it across the top to give it the look of a sketched pencil line. I'm then lining again where the cake turns into a cream swirl, but as you can see I'm not following the actual line of the white sugar paste. You see I've gone up diagonally on the sausage. This is because from where I'm looking at it on the left, I need to be able to see that black line edge. So I've brought it up so my eye can see it. I'm then doing the same with the other swirl and across the top of the cherry. Again, where my eye is from a fixed point, the whole cake has to have a black outline. That's why you can see me running another one down the center of this swirl. It looks odd from this angle, but perfectly fine from where I'm standing. I'm then adding on some little half circles to give the implication of holes in the cake. I then decided to add a little shine to the cherry, which again needs outlining. So just remember, the more details you add, the more outlines you're going to have to make. And that's it. Just a quick one, but really, really effective. I took a picture of this and posted it on Instagram, which confused a lot of people who thought it might be a sticker or a drawing at first until they looked a bit closer. As you can see, I'm filming from the angle where I placed my dot on the board. So you can see there's a black outline around the entire cake, across the bottom, up the sides, and even across the top of the cherry and the cream. You just want to make sure the whole thing is outlined from where you're intending to look at it from. If I then stepped to the left and tried to film the back, it wouldn't work quite as well. So this was my entry. I went with a comic style rather than a character from a comic book because I've done quite a few of them in my years of cake. But if you want your comic book fix, stick around for everybody's entries and make sure you vote for your favorite in the comments below. Not many entries this time, but that just means each one of them has a bigger chance of winning. Thanks guys, see you again next week.